Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to solve word problems using one variable inequalities. The key is to make sure that we set up a correct inequality based off the word problem that we've been given. And we're going to want to look for keywords to do that, such as less than, greater than, at least, at most, and make sure that we pick the correct inequality sign based off of the wording of the problem. Our first example, in order to ride the roller coaster at the local theme park, you have to be at least 60 inches tall. Write an inequality that represents the situation and graph the solution set on the real number line. With every word problem, we need to make sure that we define our variable. So in this case, we'll let x be equal to height in inches. So now we can use x to set up our inequality. So we need to be at least 60 inches tall. So that means x has to be greater than or equal to 60. At least can be 60 inches or anything larger or greater than 60. So greater than or equal to 60. Now we need to graph the solution set on the real number line. So we'll put 60 in the middle, 59 to the left, and 61 to the right. So to graph this solution set, put a close point on 60, and we'll shade all the values that are greater than 60. Now, typically with word problems, we're not going to be graphing a solution set. More likely, we're going to be using the inequality to come up with an answer. So let's look at an example like that. Craig needs to park his car in a parking garage downtown. The parking garage charges a $10 entrance fee plus $5 per full hour parked. If he wants to spend less than $50, how many full hours can he park his car in the parking garage? As always, we'll start by defining our variable, which in this case, x is going to represent the number of hours parked. Now, the way that we're go uh, going to figure out how much this parking garage is charging is looking here. They charge a $10 entrance fee, so that's a fixed value, that's a y-intercept, and $5 per full hour, so that's a rate, that's going to be a slope. So they're going to charge 5x plus $10. Okay, so there's our expression that we can use to figure out how much the parking garage charges and Craig wants that to be less than 50. So we want this to be less than 50. Now that we have our inequality set up correctly, we can subtract 10 from both sides. We have 5x is less than 40. Divide both sides by 5. x is less than 8. So the number of hours that Craig can park needs to be less than 8 if he wants to pay less than $50. Now the question asks how many full hours can he park? So the number of full hours that's less than eight would be seven. So he can park for seven full hours and pay less than $50. Okay, so it's important that we read the question and answer it based off the inequality that we get. Next up, Siri has $30 to buy hamburgers and french fries for her friends. A hamburger costs $4 and an order of french fries costs $3. If she wants to buy twice as many hamburgers as french fries, how many hamburgers can she buy? So we have a choice here. Do we want x to be the number of hamburgers or the orders of french fries? Well, if we read again, she wants to buy twice as many hamburgers as french fries. So hamburgers is defined in terms of french fries. It'll be easier for us to define x as the number of french fry orders. So I'll just write number of french fries, but number of french fry orders. So then the number of hamburgers is going to be 2x, twice as many. So that's the number of hamburgers. Okay, so to figure out how much she would spend, we have to take how many she ordered of french fries and hamburgers and multiply 
each by how much they cost. So the french fries cost $3, so we have $3 times x orders of french fries. Hamburgers cost $4, so 4 times 2x orders of hamburgers. And she only has $30 to spend. So that means we need this value to be less than or equal to 30. Now in this problem, there was no key words to indicate the less than or equal sign. Right? It doesn't say at most, at least, less than, greater than. But we have to understand the context of this problem. If she's ordering the food, she needs to make sure that the amount she owes is less than or equal to the amount she has. Okay, so we just use the context of the problem to set up this inequality. We can simplify the left side. So we have 3x plus 8x is less than or equal to 30. 11x is less than or equal to 30. Divide both sides by 11. x is less than or equal to 30 over 11. Now, it doesn't work out perfectly. 30 over 11 is a decimal value. It's a little bit less than 3, right? 33 over 11 would be 3. So this is 2 point something. Let's say 2.8 approximately. Now, we can't go into a restaurant and order 2.8 orders of french fries. That doesn't make sense in the context of this problem. So in the context of this problem, how many orders of french fries can we make? Well, it has to be less than this 30 over 11 value. So we can make two orders of french fries then. So we have two orders of french fries. which means that then we'll have four hamburgers that we order. Now, the word problem only wanted the number of hamburgers that she can buy. We had to use the number of french fries to get that, but we'll only box in the four hamburgers. And again, it's good to see in this case that's not a perfect value, but we can come up with an answer based on the context of the problem. Andy has two jobs after school, coaching a youth basketball team and waiting tables at the local diner. He makes $15 an hour coaching and $10 an hour waiting tables. If Andy works eight hours every week as a coach, how many full hours must he work as a waiter to reach his goal of earning at least $235 a week? So we're going to let X be the number of hours waiting tables. So in a given week, he makes $15 an hour coaching and he does that for eight hours. Okay, so $15 times the eight hours. So that's how much he makes coaching. Then $10 an hour waiting tables times the X number of hours he's doing that and he wants to earn at least $235. So we want that to be greater than or equal to 235. So now we can simplify. So 15 times eight, we'd have 80 plus 40, so 120 plus 10 X is greater than or equal to 235. And now we can solve our inequality. We can subtract 120 from both sides. So 10x is greater than or equal to 115. We can divide both sides by 10. And we have x is greater than or equal to 11.5. So in order to meet his goal of making at least $235 a week, he's going to have to wait tables for at least 11.5 hours, right? X has to be greater than or equal to 11.5. So the question asks, how many full hours must he work as a waiter? Well, in order to make this inequality true, the lowest whole number or integer, however you want to think about it, that satisfies this inequality is 12. So he has to work 12 hours as a waiter to meet his goal. And then anything more than that, he just 
exceeds his goal by more and more money. Irene wants to complete at least 90 pull-ups over the course of the next four weeks. If she plans on increasing the amount of pull-ups she does by three each week, what is the least number of full pull-ups she must complete the first week to reach her goal? So we're going to let x be equal to the number of pull-ups week one. Okay, so week one, she's going to complete x pull-ups. Week two, she's going to increase that by three, so x plus three. Week three, x plus six. Week four, x plus nine. And she wants this to be at least 90 pull-ups. So greater than or equal to 90. So if we simplify the left side, we have 4x plus 18 is greater than or equal to 90. And now we can solve. So we can subtract 18 from both sides. 4x is greater than or equal to 72. Divide both sides of our inequality by 4. And we have x is greater than or equal to 18. So what is the least number of full pull-ups that she must complete to reach her goal? 18 pull-ups. So if she does 18 pull-ups that first week, and she continues to increase by 3 each week thereafter, she's going to reach her goal of completing at least 90 pull-ups. Joanne is planning to throw a holiday party at a local restaurant. They charge a booking fee of $200 and $60 per person that attends the party. If her goal is to spend between $80 and $100 per person to throw the party, how many people must attend? Okay, so this is a little bit more difficult than the word problems that we're dealing with because now we're talking about an average cost, right? $80 to $100 per person is what Joanne wants to spend. So first let's define our variable. So let x be equal to the number of people that are going to attend Joanne's holiday party. So first thing, let's figure out how much the restaurant's going to charge her. Well, they're going to charge her 200 to book plus $60 per person. So 60 times x. Okay, so that's the total cost. Now, if we want to figure out the cost per person, we're going, and I'll write this off the side, so the cost per person is going to be the total divided by the number of people. Okay, so we have the total that Joanne's being charged by the restaurant. Now we have to divide that by the number of people that are coming. Well, that's x. And if we do that, we need this number to be between 80 and 100. So there we have our inequality. Now, compound inequality, and we haven't seen any of those yet, and even trickier because of this whole figuring out the cost per person. But again, if we reason through it, I think we could come up with this on our own. So now we need to separate this. So we're going to have 80 is less than 200 plus 60x over x and 200 plus 60x over x is less than 100. So we've broken apart this compound inequality using and, and now we're going to solve each inequality individually. So I'll start by multiplying x on both sides here. So we have 80x is less than 200 plus 60x. We can subtract 60x from both sides. 20x is less than 200. Divide both sides by 20. And we have x is less than 10. And then here, we'll again start by multiplying x on both sides. 
So just in case we weren't clear here, those x's are going to simplify. So we have 200 plus 60x is less than 100x. Subtract 60x from both sides. So 200 is less than 40x. Divide both sides by 40. 5 is less than x. Okay, so there's an end in between these. So x has to be less than 10 and uh, x has to be greater than 5. So if we combine them to write them as a single inequality, we'd have 5 is less than x, which is less than 10. So to answer the question, which stated how many people must attend, so between 5 and 10 people must attend her holiday party. Okay, so that means 6, 7, 8, or 9. Now, the numbers aren't always going to be that close where listing them out would make sense, but in this case, we could if we wanted to. All right, so there's how we solve word problems using single variable inequalities. And again, the key is to look for those words in the word problems that are going to translate to the inequality, right? That greater than, that less than, at least, at most. And then from there, just use all the solving techniques that we've been working on the past few days, right? So now it's your turn to practice this idea. Go and do as many word problems as you can until you feel confident with the material.